This video is sponsored by Rakuten. Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis, where I like to research and discuss things relevant to social issues and media. Today, we're gonna be talking about Mr. Beast's content. So recently, I promised a video on what I call money spending content, or spending money content, depending on your grammar, <laughs> because Mr. Beast spends millions of dollars on his videos every year. Last remove your hand off this million dollars, keeps it. 300 gold coins right here. Congratulations. <laughs> $20,000 actually in cash. Buy whatever car you want. So my introduction to Mr. Beast was the Twitter giveaway with Twitter philanthropist Bill Pulte, which you can watch my video about that if you're interested. But yes, that brought me to Mr. Beast. I was familiar with his Team Trees campaign, but I had never seen his channel. And once I looked at it, I was shook by just how extra his videos are. Mr. Beast's whole channel is built on gimmicks. Like in the beginning, he went viral for doing videos like microwaving a microwave, microwaving a toaster. He also had a nearly 24 hour long upload of him just counting to 100,000. I'm not gonna lie, my first impression was very negative. That is not my type of content, to say the least. I cringed at a lot of the titles and thumbnails and some of them seemed very low effort. Also, I noticed some videos that are definitely insensitive, like Homeless Man Buys a Lamborghini, in which Mr. Beast dresses up as a homeless person, as in putting dirt on himself and wearing ripped clothing, goes and buys a Lambo, and goes to other luxury stores just to basically see how the salespeople react. <laughs> how would you react if you saw someone you assumed was homeless trying to buy luxury goods? Ah, yeah, not a great video. But I do think the like clickbait of it all and just the entire subject matter definitely trivializes homelessness and makes a literal joke of it, which actually conflicts with a lot of the work that Mr. Beast does in his other videos where he actually tries to help people experiencing homelessness. So we'll talk about that more in this video. But first, let's just classify Mr. Beast's content. In my mind, he basically has two main types of videos. First being gimmicks and stunts, and the second being spending or giving away money. He also has a lot of overlap between the two categories. There are expensive gimmicks. First, let's talk about those gimmicks quickly. Some of them are just frankly absolutely ridiculous and wasteful. Like he put a million Orbeez in his friend's backyard or the time he destroyed his friend's house and then bought him a new one. <laughs> Content, you know? Destroying a literal house worth of items and then having to replace them. That's entertaining. I get that it might be interesting or impressive in the sense that we don't see this often because people don't do things like this very often, but I am not a fan. It's wasteful and I just don't like to see that. But in looking at his channel, it does appear that he has been transitioning away from those type of gimmicks and focusing more on this very blatantly money relevant content. And he's made it clear that he is very willing to invest in his videos. He's willing to spend money so that his videos can be intriguing, go viral, and then earn him more money so he can continue making those videos. Also, he has said that a lot of the sponsors on his videos cover the stunts and expensive gimmicks. So he has ways to pay for these things and continue doing these types of videos. So as I just mentioned, a lot, if not most of Mr. Beast's videos involve money. And now I have divided that into subcategories. First being random generosity. He has a lot of videos, especially older ones, where he just literally throws money at strangers or he'll randomly donate to Twitch streamers. Okay. Second category is kind of just treating his friends. So his best friends get to be featured in his videos often, and sometimes they participate in these spending challenges or other contests where they can win prizes or money. He had one video that was spending $40,000 in an hour challenge. And in the description of that video, it says, I only gave him one hour to spend $40,000 and this is what he bought. But he actually gave eight friends $5,000 each. So I don't know what that description is referring to. The title and everything is all definitely clickbait because one person spending $40,000 in an hour, I guess is more intriguing than multiple people spending a cumulative $40,000, whatever. Not to nitpick, but also, 
nitpicking. Still though, I don't like those videos because obviously even just $5,000 for one person is huge. Most people, $5,000 could do a lot for them. So to see eight of his friends just go and literally thoughtlessly buy stuff unnecessarily. I don't like to see it. I don't like the kind of promotion of unresearched, spur of the moment financial decisions. I know that it's a video and it's meant to be entertaining. And maybe some people do find it entertaining because it's so surreal, like this doesn't happen to people in real life, but mmm. Anyway, third subcategory would be more thoughtful and time consuming sprees. This is more random generosity, but in different forms. Like the time that Mr. Beast bought everything in a store, but then he donated it all to a local food bank. So that's quite a gesture of generosity, but it is also a gimmick to get clicks. So what is the appeal of these videos? I think that they are very aspirational. I think that a lot of Mr. Beast viewers either would like to spend money like that, or they would love the chance to be able to give money like that, gift that experience to others. So when you watch his videos, you get to kind of live vicariously through all these people and imagine what it would be like if you could be doing those things. And as I said, based on Jimmy, by the way, Mr. Beast's name is Jimmy, based on Jimmy's uploads over 2019, he seems to be leaning more toward that last category of those more elaborate, generous gimmicks instead of just literally throwing money at people or just giving stuff to his friends. So I have watched a lot of Mr. Beast videos in the past few days, and I did not expect this, but I actually came to enjoy some of them. Shockingly. Allow me to explain. At the end of 2019, Mr. Beast had a four-part series called Last to Leave, where the contestants had the chance to compete to win a million dollars. So in each part, four contestants would compete, and then whoever won that round would advance to the million dollar round. So okay, some lucky people get the chance to potentially win a million dollars. Who gets to compete? Mr. Beast said that to enter, you could either buy his merch, or follow him on Instagram. And again, if you saw my Twitter philanthropy video where I asked, aren't giveaways just a way to buy followers? Except in this case, it's not even a giveaway. It's a chance to potentially compete to maybe win a million dollars. But hey, still worth a try, right? At first I was like, oh, it's pretty shady to like try to encourage people to buy your merch just to get the chance to maybe compete to win a million dollars. That doesn't seem very cool. But again, following him on Instagram is free and also on his website, I saw that there was a free entry form. So anyone who was over the age of 18 in the United States would be able to enter this contest. Sorry, I'm crying, my throat hurts, I'm sick. It hurts to talk, that's fun. But first, let's give a shout out to today's sponsor, which is Rakuten. If we are gonna be talking about spending money, let's be sure to get some cash back, baby. You might be familiar with Ebates. Well, they have rebranded to Rakuten. New name, same great service. Basically, Rakuten is the largest cash back site and they're partnered with over 3,000 of the biggest name brands like Macy's, Ulta, Target, and more to give you promo codes, coupons, and cash back all for free. So all you have to do is just click links through Rakuten to bring you back to the store websites and just do your shopping that you were already planning to do. So for me personally, I do most of my gift shopping online because most of my friends and family live far away from me. Let's say for example, I use Rakuten to go to Target's websites. My mom loves Target, that is my go-to for her. So I'll pick her out something nice and then see what kind of rewards Rakuten has in store for me. It is that easy and again, you're already doing your shopping. So this just helps you save money or get cash back. So you can join Rakuten for free with the link in my description and after you place your first order of $25 or more, you will get a $10 welcome bonus. Also, Rakuten is sponsoring a $100 giveaway for one of you guys. So after you sign up for Rakuten using the first link in the description, you can click the second link to enter that giveaway. Thanks again, Rakuten. Now let's get back into the video. Okay, so back to the series. Basically, in each part, the contestants just have to outlast their opponents. So there's last to fall, last to stop swinging, last to leave toilet, and last to stop biking. First episode, I will admit, I was like, okay, this set is impressive. And Mr. Beast joked that it was from the American Ninja Warrior set, and I was like, 
It actually could be though. So I'm watching the episode and all of a sudden he says to incentivize the coaches who are his friends there to like cheer on the contestants. If any of those contestants win the million dollars, they have to give 10% to their coach. And I was like, excuse me, I hope that the contestants were told this beforehand and not in the middle of the competition that they're already doing, because clearly they can't argue with that. I mean, they're already gonna have to pay a ton in taxes, so it kind of sucks to lose another 100,000 right off the bat. But again, okay, we're competing for hundreds of thousands of dollars, Fine. So in the first contest, the last two contestants apparently lasted over 24 hours, like standing on this tightrope thing with their arms up in those loops. And I'm like, excuse me? Hold on, did they get to eat or sleep or drink or pee? I am concerned. Like maybe we are just supposed to suspend our disbelief and whatever, keep your head in the game. But I have so many questions. And then we continue and we get to the toilet one, which to me seemed a lot easier to bear because you know, they had blankets, they got to sit, they got food. Anyway, I just wanna know what happens off camera. Do they get breaks? Please tell us. Maybe I'm the only one who cares. And then at one point, a pizza delivery guy comes and brings everybody food and Mr. Beast tips the guy like a fat stack of cash. And again, he literally throws the money at the guy like it's nothing. And I was just like, maybe money is nothing to Mr. Beast. I mean, again, clearly he has no problem with spending money on his videos. I'm like, okay, if I were working a service job again, would I be like offended if someone threw money at me? No, not at all, I'd be happy. I'm like, honestly, just keep keep throwing money at me, that's fine. <laughs> By the way, each contestant that doesn't end up winning their round doesn't leave empty-handed. There's like this unicorn thing that comes out at some point that's full of like expensive tech stuff that's worth a few thousand dollars. And then near the end, they try to get people to quit by offering them up to like $10,000 cash, so. That's pretty nice. At least these people who are potentially suffering for 36 hours get something out of it. That's good. And then we get to the last contest and I noticed that I think only two, maybe three of the 16 contestants were girls. And okay, like maybe Mr. Beast's audience is mainly male. That might be it, but I just think, hmm. Like, it's not like these are like strength competitions. They're just endurance tests. You'd think that girls would be just as capable of hanging out or sitting on a toilet for many hours, but I digress. Okay, so what were my main takeaways from watching these four episodes, which were hard to get through? They were very boring, okay? What the actual contestants are doing in the competition is just endurance. So it is not entertaining to look at. There's nothing going on. Um, so I guess to try to keep the videos entertaining, Jimmy and his friends just kind of mess around and do their best to do things that are funny, which isn't much, but it's something. Nope. Ah, right. But I did have a few highlights. My favorite moments were usually near the end of each challenge where people are really getting exhausted, reaching the end of their rope. I was surprised to see a lot of the contestants get emotional, especially the men, not to stereotype, but typically we don't see a lot of men willing to like cry on camera when they know millions of people are gonna see it. Maybe that's the exhaustion speaking. Either way, it was sweet to see. Oh my gosh, please tell me you won. Yeah, bro. yeah he did, he got the dough. So he does. No. <laughs> I did it for you, bro, because I know this means a lot to you. Mm -hmm. I know it's gonna make our lives a lot better if I can, if I can win that one mil. I'm gonna do it for us, so I love you. Okay. Dang, I'm crying now, oh my God. It was nice to hear the contestants talk about like the meaning of what that prize money would be to them and how it would affect their life and their families and how they could help people. So those moments, I was like, wow, yes, give us more of this, please. Now here's a quick tangent about game shows because essentially this whole series is a game show. It's a YouTube game show. By the way, fun fact, um, after World War II in early television, there were shows called misery shows which basically just exploited the pain and suffering of post-war families. A lot of these shows, you would have the mother come onto the show and she would have to tell like a sob story, their really terrible situation, in order to try to win the support of the audience so that she could win prizes and potentially be able to help her family in some way. Birch has a boy who's 13 and he has cerebral palsy. She would like a wheelchair and a special bike for him. She was working, but it's impossible for her. She had a little operation, so that's what she'd like, a wheelchair 
Montana. Special bike. Your applause for candidate number one. Thank you very much. Thank you. So if you did have the opportunity to go on a TV show, and yeah, you had to share all of your most vulnerable stories, people would be willing to do that. I'm sure a lot of you watching would be willing to do that, to just have the chance to potentially be able to make your family's life better. I'm personally a big fan of game shows. I used to like dream of just being a contestant on all the game shows. I was like, oh, I'm just gonna get really good at auditioning. I'm gonna be great on camera. And then I'm gonna go win some prizes, um, which hey, I might still be open. We could always try it. But again, of course you need a story, whether it's literally American Idol or another talent show or Wheel of Fortune, I don't know, Jeopardy. You have to have a story. There has to be something that makes the audience support you and root for you and want you to win that money. We all just want to see the underdog win. So anyway, that's why I found it interesting to see this in Mr. Beast series. I mean, it's a typical thing. You play to emotion in a lot of different videos, but specifically in this game show like context, that's really where I would say the strength of the series lies is in those emotional moments. Because first of all, I'm a softy. I can cry at anything and I love to experience emotion. But again, it just makes you have a better connection with the contestants, and it makes you more invested in the outcome of the series, which ultimately encourages you to keep watching. Okay, finally, the four parts are done. We've had all the contestants and we have four winners from each and they compete in the final video to win $1 million. The million dollars is literally in a cube and they just have to keep their hand on it. And the last person to be able to continue doing that wins. Spoiler alert, Mark won. I'm not gonna make you guys watch guys keeping their hand to a thing. So anyway, congratulations, Mark. Then he had to give 100,000 right off the bat to his coach and another 50,000 that he had promised if he won to give to another contestant. So now he has $850,000 cash baby and i thought that was it but wait there's a next video spending a million dollars in 24 hours excuse me i didn't know they had to spend all the money in 24 hours that is ridiculous but of course i'm gonna watch it also again to be technical about the clickbait technically he's spending eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a day but still whatever i am in the universe of mr beast now and anything he says in his clickbait thumbnail and titles goes I'm gonna quickly go through the things that Mark bought in his day of spending. He had a $24,000 shopping spree buying tech and gifts for his friends and family. And then he bought two cars, a GMC and a BMW for $100,000, yikes. Immediately I was like, well, what about long-term costs? What about repairs, insurance? These are brand new expensive cars. He then bought a $20,000 ring for his wife. So then they visit Mark's house. So this is where you currently live. Yeah. This is my room. You know, this is where me, my wife sleep. You see, there ain't no room at all. Like You can't even open the door all the way. And I immediately noticed the sad music that they put in the background while they were showing how small Mark's room is and the fact that his cousin sleeps on an air mattress. Your little cousin sleeps on an air mattress? Yeah, and it's, he popped it, so it's flat. And I get that this is supposed to be an emotional scene. This is supposed to be kind of showing the lows right before the highs because we know that he is about to get a new house and have new stuff and this isn't gonna be his life situation anymore. Can I just say, I'm super glad you won the million dollars. I really am. Thank the you. more you show us around, the more I'm like, thank God <laughs> you won the million dollars. Would it be better if he just omitted that and didn't acknowledge the reality of where Mark was coming from? I don't know. Let me know how you guys feel about it. Is there a good way to do this? So yes, then they go and actually buy the house again within one day. Uh, did they have time to do any research or shopping, buying a house in one day. Terrifying. They buy a house for him and his wife, and I think possibly his sister and his cousin, some other family members are gonna live there as well for $165,000, which right away I'm like, wow, what state is that? Man, this is crazy, bro. Man, look at you. This house. Stamp it. I want it. Let's go tell the realtor then. Anyway, then they spend another 30 something thousand dollars in furniture and another 30 thousand something in like tech for the house. And Mark says that he's gonna start a YouTube channel. So they get him decked out with some YouTube equipment. So overall, this video so far, spending a million dollars in 24 hours, I am just overwhelmed with the fact that how reckless this spending is. It pains me to see someone dropping so much money so quickly 
I would not want to make these major decisions with no time to think. Like I could stand and compare vacuums in Target for like an hour trying to make sure that I get the right one. So yeah, spending a million dollars in a day. They would have been able to save a lot of money if he was able to do more researching and shopping around and stuff. They could have been a lot more thrifty. But clearly this whole process and the gimmick of spending everything in 24 hours is part of the video, part of the agreement. So it must have been a requirement to do so to be able to win this prize. P.S. Graham Stefan did make a video about this and I thought it was really good. Of course, Graham's channels are all about money and personal finance and he doesn't like to spend any money if he can avoid it. I really like that in that video, he's not just roasting the guy for spending money because again, anybody could do that, but he does understand and recognize that this is for the content, therefore Mark didn't really have much choice in it other than what to buy. So hey, go wild. However, I still believe that overall this video is promoting reckless, like unresearched spending, which I would obviously not recommend anyone to do. I think even if you have a huge budget, even if you're rich, everyone should take the time to think about things and try to find better deals and reconsider, you know, what's really a necessity or what's gonna improve your life and what you just think is cool on a whim and then you buy and then you never really use or need or appreciate. So then what about taxes, okay? This has been a concern of mine about all of Mr. Beast's gifts because obviously he gives money and things to people all the time. And typically if you receive a prize, you have to pay taxes on the value of that at your same income tax rate. So for example, again with game shows, say you win a new car. There's no way to say you want a new car and not use that voice. You would have to pay taxes on the car. So if you won the car and cash, the cash could help you pay for the tax on the car, if that makes sense. But if you just win the car, for example, you would either have to accept the car and just pay the tax out of pocket if you have it, or you could sell the car and then pay the taxes with that money and then maybe buy a cheaper car, or you could just refuse the car. I don't know why you would do that, but maybe you would. So my question is, can Mr. Beast's winners handle the taxes on these prizes? According to this clip from the H3 H3 podcast that Jimmy was on, he said that he does cover the taxes for the gifts. So I hope that that is true. It would be really good to know that he's not screwing people over, you know? And the great thing is in this video, spending a million dollars, they do sit down at the very end and talk about these other numbers like taxes, the entire amount that they need to set aside for that. And also I think he set aside money for investing and then he gave Mark some money for other expenses and things. So again, it is clickbait. He didn't literally spend a whole million dollars in 24 hours, but his whole part of the 850,000 was accounted for by the end of the day. But I was really, really glad to see, again, the fact that they met with a financial planner or a CPA, maybe both, and went over and explained everything to Mark because winning a lot of money all of a sudden can be very overwhelming and a lot of us don't have a lot of financial knowledge and don't understand these concepts because they can be very confusing. So it is good to know that he was taken care of in that sense. One of my goals for this video was just to make sure you don't get screwed over. Like I genuinely think you will do fine. If you ever need anything, just let me know. Thank you and I appreciate everybody. So continuing on, aside from the questionable financial decisions, I did really enjoy this episode. It was really sweet to see Mark so excited to be able to buy so many things for his new life. And the first thing he wanted to do was get gifts for his friends and family. And that was really sweet. Did I cry? Of course I did. I also think that this episode was just actually very similar to like home makeover type of shows. You know, when you see a family living in a place that's too small, they need help. And then HGTV shows up and here you go, new house, new stuff. I love those shows. However, again, similar to those shows, and as I've mentioned before, we need a story. We need a tragedy to make us root for you, to make us believe that this family deserves the prize, whatever. So in some ways, those kind of home makeover shows definitely do exploit poverty and these really tough, tragic situations. But also under capitalism, it's like, okay, if you can essentially sell your sad life story and be able to win something really valuable in return, like 
most of us would be down for that. It's almost like the fact that we feel compelled to use and exploit our personal tragedies for college admission essays. Like, it really sucks to feel like you have to be vulnerable in that way and share the very worst things that you've experienced in your life, but it's what people want to hear, whether they are college admission officers or casting people for a home improvement show. You tell us the sad story, we'll hook you up. We'll get you into that college, maybe, if you're good enough. Or if your family's good enough on TV, maybe we'll fix up your home. Anyway though, most of us are fine with that, you know? Take my soul, <laughs> give me things. Anyway though, as the audience, it is truly heartwarming and nice to see people be able to upgrade their lives, literally, materially upgrade their lives, and know that those physical things are going to make such a difference in their life and their family. I'm not a fan of like over the top spending or over consumption or luxury goods generally, but I do definitely know the value of comfort, you know, the safety in having a home that's fully paid for and cars that are fully paid for. Everything that you need, not just to survive, but to really feel comfortable and safe is all around you. That is so valuable. So in that sense, Mr. Beast just gifted Mark essentially a comfortable middle-class life, which is pretty profound. Like a week ago, I only have $5 in my bank account. Like I didn't have nothing, really couldn't feed my wife. I couldn't feed my sister, but now I'm able to like provide for my family. So this is like a really, really good experience for me and genuinely from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I mean, yes, Mark still has to work and I'm sure his wife works. They've still got other bills to pay, but essentially most of their major needs are covered for now. At this point, I've watched the whole series. I've done my research for this video. You'd think I would be done. <laughs> no. A video started auto-playing called I ordered a pizza and tipped the house, which actually ended up being really sweet. Um, this was based on another gimmick, of course. Mr. Beast ordered a pizza, the delivery guy arrived, and then they asked if they could pay him to move some furniture, but the guy doesn't know that the house that they're moving all the stuff into is gonna be his, ah! So again, this is similar to those home makeover shows. We end up learning a little bit more about pizza delivery guy. We learn that he has a kid and a dog, and we're just so excited to see how this is gonna change his life. Jimmy's actually made a few other videos similar to this. Uh, one was where one of his friend's family friends was about to be evicted, and they decided to buy him a place and furnish it and give him the keys, which was sweet. Again, I'm a sucker for all of these videos. Give me the content. By the way, one last thing that I can appreciate about this is that Jimmy and his friends actually do all of the work, which is good to see. He could easily hire movers or something and not film that whole process, but he and his friends actually go out, they do all the shopping, they load and unload things, they unpack, they put things together. I was really glad to see that. Um, I think it's cool that Mr. Beast has the chance to employ so many of his friends and they get to make these fun videos in the meantime. Okay, so my overall judgment of Mr. Beast content, now that I have seen more of his stuff that's recent and not just him counting to 100,000 or something. First of all, I think it's fascinating to see what YouTubers can do with big budgets because we don't often see YouTubers spending a lot of money on their videos in the ways that Mr. Beast does. We often see creators get rich off of their videos, naturally, and then sometimes we see their lifestyle inflation, we see their houses, what they spend their money on, but we don't really see Mr. Beast himself flex about his own material possessions. We see him giving away and buying things for other people much more often. So I actually really do appreciate that and I can give him credit. Um, if you've seen my video on flex culture, you'll know that most YouTubers are flexing. So based on his uploads over the course of 2019, I think it's pretty clear that he's still continuing to make videos kind of in this direction, in this realm of big, over the top, generous acts of kindness, you know? And I like to see it. I don't know in terms of content how entertaining it would be if every single Mr. Beast video was like another home makeover 
gifted to somebody random. I mean, I would probably still like it and cry, but I do know that he does seem to always change up his content, so I'm sure he won't stick with this exact formula for too long. Final thoughts. First of all, I wanna know where everybody is now, okay? I need follow-up videos, even though I think the Pizza Guy video was like only a couple weeks ago. I just wanna see how everybody's doing. How's he, how's Mark? I know that these people deserve privacy, uh, but I am a sucker for a follow-up, so I hope maybe we get to see what happens. Also, Mark was supposed to start a YouTube channel. He bought all the equipment, and I tried to find his channel and couldn't find anything, so I don't know if he ended up doing that. Anyway, generally, I am just fascinated by how people spend their money, especially when you get a huge amount of money that you're not used to, either in like a really big raise at work or an inheritance or winning the lottery, you know, whether it's 50,000, 100,000 or a million or millions, like it is actually a very emotional and stressful situation to be in, though obviously we're all like, dude, I would take it. There's a lot more complexities involved. So I love to just hear people's thoughts and reactions and what they end up doing with that money. By the way, please comment down below uh, what you would spend your huge lump of money. Lump of money, lump sum. Like what would be your first priorities? Would you buy things? Would you get your parents a house? Would you pay off your student loans? That would be responsible. My sister also recently told me about a documentary about what happened when a man experiencing chronic homelessness was suddenly given $100,000 cash to spend in whatever way he wanted. I think it's called Reversal of Fortune. It's from 2005, so check it out if you're interested. But kind of on that note, though that wasn't the lottery, it is similar to lottery winners, and I've been reading a lot about lottery winners, so I might wanna make a video about the dark sides of winning the lottery. If you guys are interested, please let me know. Okay, that's all, my voice is gone. I'm gonna rest now. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I have a vlog channel if you wanna watch it. I have a podcast. You can follow me on Instagram for some mediocre pics. You can follow me on Twitter for some political tweets. Hi, Messy Me here. Don't forget to sign up for Rakuten and enter that giveaway. Links in the description. Get that cash money, baby. And please subscribe and stay tuned for my next video. Okay, thanks, bye.